fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod and Edomite and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learn from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. Brother and sister, they are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrews. Let's go! All praise and be to the most higher Yeah, I say it. From my, I was a fortune to meet my grandparents. Whom from childhood had always made us to understand that we are one of the lost tribes of Israel. Okay. So from my grandmother. Right. Now look at these. Yeah, I'm telling you, I gotta show y'all. A, a, a picture speaks a thousand words. Just look for yourself. And this is the creme de la creme. All praises be to the most high y'all. Everything we've been through, y'all. The Most High is going to retribute it on all the nations that have had a hand in the oppression of his apple, the apple of his eye, his chosen people, his beloved, his fervent lover, his only begotten. They're going to have their part in the lake of fire. You see them tormented by some kind of creature. I don't even know what that even is, y'all. Judgment in chains. He that led into captivity shall go into captivity. All praise to the Most High God. What's up, Zion Dynasty? This is your favorite dreaded Israelite. This is your favorite dreaded Israelite. The man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. JB Zion. Y'all already know what time it is. You already know what to do. Show me some love. Show me some love. Your boy is back in the flesh. About to hit y'all with another. Bang! Your all praises, honor, Glory, dominion, majesty, power, world without end to the mighty one of Yaakobi, the holy one of Israel, the redeemer of Zion, and the resurrector of the bones of Ezekiel, the restorer of the 12 tribes, even the most high, Yah, all praises to the most high, Yah, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai. And first, I want to extend peace, love, greetings, black power, more power to all my Israelite brothers and sisters. I love y'all with everything that's in me, y'all. Your boy's so hype, we finna do it, y'all. But not just y'all. I want to send peace, love, blessings to all our Gentile supporters, all those that are not lost in the sauce, all those that ain't lost in the sauce of the deception of Christianity with these goon squad, urban apologists, and all that lies. We could not do this without y'all. I'm telling y'all. Y'all wake me up in the morning, you give me just purpose and passion, me and Shawnee D, we work so hard to get y'all these lessons, y'all are just awesome, and we could not do this without y'all support. So, y'all we about to get into it, your boy is about to go in, this is about to be a history lesson, this is about to be a DNA journey, and y'all already know, this is the channel where we bring that smoke, where we bring in that smoke. This is the channel where we bring the receipts. This is where we got the Harvard type credibility. We got the Oxford scholars. We got the Cambridge scholars. This is the channel, y'all. We got DNA. I don't get on here lying to y'all and just making some statements to stick to the wall. I'm making my effort to study to show myself approved, um, to make sure that everything is verified where two or three witnesses are gathered together. This is the channel where we prove without a shadow of a doubt that so-called Crayola color black, so-called two continent slap, so-called African Americans, right? That we are in fact descended from West and South African sub-Saharan tribes that descend from the ancient Natufian Israelites. All oh, praises be to the most high God. So y'all, we about to get into it. This video, we're dealing with DNA. Y'all, we're about to deal with E1B1A. We're about to deal with EP2, E1B1. Um, I, we talked about that Harvard study from 2011, 2012 that found that DNA in the land of Israel. I'm going to talk about that in more detail. Um, Y'all, we're about to deal with this. Uh, so, we're going to deal with all that DNA talk. And we're going to actually ask ourselves, is the DNA worth it? Now, as y'all see on the bookshelf, it's looking kind of empty. 
because your boy's about to set this stage up right. We're about to deal with the scholarship that sets the stage for the DNA claim, and then I'm gonna answer that age-old question a lot of y'all been answered. Does DNA matter? You know, that don't matter. Only the prophecies matter. Only the curses matter. You know, DNA they own by them ish people. And all this stuff, family, we're gonna deal with that. A lot of y'all been blowing me up about that, and a lot of y'all have questions about your personal DNA, and I'm gonna get to answering every last one of those. Um, and hopefully I can deal with some of the major DNA groups that African Americans come from, um, linking back to those um, West African tribes and answer some of those questions for y'all through this video. But I know there's a lot of nomenclature. And like I done told y'all, the what these ish people, Esau and the nations are watching this awakening. Y'all understand, there is so much knowledge. Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase in the last days. There's so much research coming out. I quote, I don't know how many, at least five to 10 Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, um, UNESCO, authors just in each video. And I post videos every day, y'all already know. So you see how knowledge is coming out like never seen before. DNA studies, old bones, archeology, span my true ancestry, Jed match, comparisons, 23andMe, African ancestry. Y'all check this out. African ancestry can take a person's spit and trace you all the way back to a specific African tribal group. Y'all, this stuff is getting out of hand, I'm telling you. So a lot of the powers that be are trying to get ahead of this stuff. That's why I tell y'all, if you ask me, do I recommend doing a DNA test? Absolutely, if you can do it. But understand, there's a lot of ish people, there's a lot of Gentile influence. I do not argue that. The number one source of us being the children of Israel is the word of the Most High. Y'all better hear, is the word of the Most High, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, and the faith of Yahusha. That is the foundation. Y'all gotta understand. Because these white folks can get on these 23andMe and, and my family tree DNA, and they can alter nomenclature. They can cause confusion. A lot of Israel that are doing their DNA are getting confused, are saying, well, why my says this long E dash Z 16 15,000 dash PO box DNA? Why does mine sound so confusing? A lot of this is ish people saying, okay, well, this person's E1B1A7, this one's E1B1A71. Uh, let's call him E1 dash 7 16 50. It's just some nonsense to make us think that we're not all a part of the same family. That's why the curses are crucial. If you are a so-called black person, you descend from them slave ships, you an Israelite, it's just as clean cut as that, y'all. Not just us in America, but those are brothers on in the Caribbean, on the islands, Jamaica, Haiti. Uh, you got some that are in Mexican groups. You have, so, so the 12, now the 12 tribes chart is a whole nother thing. But I will say this, there is truth to it. The Negro DNA has been scattered everywhere, y'all. Y'all gotta understand. Our family is in Europe, we're in the UK, we're in Britain. A lot of the family that support this channel are from the UK. And that blew my mind when I looked at the analytics. Our people are scattered everywhere to the four corners of the earth. Deuteronomy 28 already said that. So y'all, it's a lot when you talk about who's Israel and who's not and you try to use DNA. The DNA can get sketchy because we're in captivity and the nations know who we are and they can every three months change the nomenclature. When I did my 23andMe, the first time it said EL45, well, no, the first time it said E1B1A7A, then it said EL45, now it says e 6 ez 16052 right? And I did that maybe two years tops ago. It shouldn't have changed that many times is what I'm saying. But they're doing this because, and I and I messaged 23 of me. I said, can you take this back to the original nomenclature? When I sent that to them, they changed it even worse. They went in the opposite direction. This is how Esau gets down. So y'all, DNA is not our foundation. But I will say this, DNA is just a tool. Just like a hammer can be used to destroy something. A hammer can be used to, to, to kill somebody or to destroy a house or an object. That same hammer can be used to build and, and, and establish nails and raise up something unto life. The tool is innocent. It's the tools, it's the person's hand that the tool is in that you have to worry about. And a lot of these different scientific tools, science itself is not evil, but the people behind these companies have an agenda that they're trying to push. They're trying to discredit all of this scholarship that's coming out and your boy's about to deal with it. 
So that's why we have to trust in the Most High, His Word, the prophecies that prove who we are. The prophecy said we would have a yoke of iron around our neck. The prophecy said the stranger would come in while you've been in America and they'll rise up very high and you'll be very low. The curse is said you're gonna go on the slave cargo ships and be sold as bond women and bond men. The curse is said that a nation as swift as your eagle flies is gonna come and carry you away unto Babylon. This is the curses. The curse is said they will come at you one way and you will be scattered seven different ways, the transatlantic. So the curses is enough. The word of the Most High, y'all, y'all better hear what I'm saying. The word of Yahweh is enough in and of itself to be able to verify and actualize who we are as a people. So we don't trust in man, we don't trust in man science because they use it with an ulterior motive, right? So first what we're gonna do, family, is I'm gonna go through some of the scholarship that kind of sets the groundwork of us being Israel out. Now this is secondary. Now this is for the people that do wanna look into this stuff a little bit further. The, the science, the DNA, the history, and that kind of thing. So now y'all, we talked about the black Jews of Africa and the Americas. This is by Dr. Tudor Parfit. Um, this is a Harvard level uh, book that talks about in detail all the different West African and South African Sub-Saharan groups that are linked to Israel. The Limba, the Abba Uganda of the Uganda people. It goes into the Ashanti, the Akan. It goes into Yoruba, the Igbo. It goes into all these tribes in details, right? Not just that, but the protege of Dr. Tudor Parfit, Dr. Edith Bruder and her Black Jews of Africa goes into even more detail. She talks about the Benai Ephraim of the Yoruba, all of that. Now this is Oxford. So we got Harvard, we got Oxford. The reason I bring this up is to show y'all how much evidence they're trying to damage control now. Now you got African Zion. This is a Cambridge collaboration of Dr. Tudor Parfit and Edith Bruder. Now I'm just showing y'all um, scholarships. So those are Ivy League level scholarship. Now, not just that, we got the Jewish encyclopedia that I've been showing y'all that talks about the Igbo, talks about the Abba Uganda people, talks about, um, the Yoruba, talks about the Limba, talks about the Ashanti, all of these are verified in the Jewish encyclopedia as being linked to Israel. These are the tribes that African Americans come from. People have a misconception that when we went into slavery, they just took random black people and took them into slavery. No, no, and that could not be further from the truth. There were specific refugees that were taken out of a specific region specific tribes out of that specific region into the transatlantic so not it's not like all random black folks that's what they think oh you think oh y'all talking about a, a skin doctrine because y'all just say oh yeah black folks israelite any black person or israelite because they don't know the history family they don't understand that the african tribes that, that we were taken from were specific they were targeted they were refugees that had fled into that region and they knew about them and they took them off into slavery where did these refugees come from this is where you get into the shafardic history this is where you get into al andalus and i'm gonna show y'all that in the dna i'm gonna switch to my screen share and show y'all al andalus spain and the old tradition of the yoruba the Igbo that says that they migrated to modern day Nigeria. They migrated from Morocco to West Africa. And that's how Christopher Columbus, that's how these Europeans, that's how the Portuguese, that's how Britain, that's how America knew that there were slaves in that area of Africa because they had not too long been there. They were Moorish, they were Moorish, uh, Shephardic Israelites that migrated from Morocco, migrated from Iberia or Al-Andalus, Spain. They migrated, these were Moorish people migrating from these regions of North Africa and Spain into Nigeria. Now, this is where we talked about light and truth. And light and truth, it defines the word more. More is similar to Negro in terms of it denotes African black people. But more has a secret to it. The word more takes us back to a specific period in history when black people, our people, African, Israelite, Amazaic, noble people ruled the earth. From 711 CE to 1492 when uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella banished them with the Alhambra decree from Granada, Spain and our people had to go to Morocco first. Now them ish people will tell you that oh well we took all those Moroccan, African, Israelites and they're in the land of Israel. 
They tell you that to bug you out. Just like they tell you that all the beta Israel of Ethiopia are in the land and they know that it, that, it, that is not true because they had three separate airlifts and I did a video on it where they had to take waves of thousands of these beta Israels out of the land of Ethiopia or out of Africa into the land of Israel. So they know that there are so many Israelites in Africa that they're trying to be hush hush about it. They're trying to take a few of them to make it look like, yeah, we know about y'all, but their, their motives are not right. So y'all, we talked about J.A. Rogers who talks about a lot of the noble Moorish Israelite families like the Don Yaya's, Yaya Negro. I'm gonna talk about that family. The Yaya Negroes are known to have migrated into Morocco, right? The Yaya Negro family, and their name was Negro. This is where we get the word Negro from. I did that on the Negro question video, y'all. That's an older video, y'all check that out. Where the word Negro was first used in 1555 and is Spanish and Portuguese in, in origin. This is why Negroes, we come from Spain. We come from Al Andalus. Al Andalus is the Arabic name for Spain. So what happened was when the fall of the temple took place, a lot of Israelites went into Africa, but you also had Israelites that during the first temple era had already went to Spain. Ancient EV or EV or E ancient Iberia or Ivri, right? was an ancient term for the he Hebrew or the Ebo. That's why some of the Ebo are known as Hebo, right? That her whole Evrit term goes back to the ancient Hebrews. So the the ancient Spain name was Iberia or Ivrit, right? The place of the Hebrew people that had already been in Spain even before the Visigoths back during the first temple era. Now that's a lot of history. I have to do a whole nother follow-up to give y'all all that, that history. But basically, you had Israelites that were already in that region of Spain, Sephardic Israelites, like the Abarbanels, you had the um, al Dahudi, the, um, I said the Abarbanels, the al Dahudi family, um, and that kind of thing. And the Yayas that had already been in Spain, they migrated from Spain into Morocco and into West Africa because they had already known about other Israelites that had already been in that region. That's why I tell y'all, Africa is the land of Ephraim. There is so many Israelites. You might as well call Africa the Northern Kingdom and I have to do another follow-up, but y'all check out that Africa land of Ephraim video. But basically the continent was flooded with various migrations of Israelites through various periods of time because our people were known for having an affinity with the land of Ham. Now I went into the, 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 the prophecy of Noah that talked about how Ham's land, right? Ham's land would be a refuge for Israel. Our people married different Hamite. Judah did, Joseph did, Moses did, Christ fled into Egypt. It's so many, y'all. I did a whole video on that. But our people were known for going into the land of Africa throughout different points in history. So there were different migrations of Israelites through various different regions. This is the Moorish Israelite or Moorish Sephardic history. Now we looked at the Jews and Moors of Spain. And I know a lot of this y'all I probably covered a while back on it's kind of like a refresher dealing with this history, dealing with this DNA that connects us back to Spain. But the Jews and Moors of Spain, this is another Harvard literature by Joseph Christoph that talks about uh, the Canary Islands. It talks about Sao Tome. It talks about how the Christian church persecuted Israelites. I will repeat, the church was set up to investigate the Inquisition to investigate any Israelite that acted like they were a Christian, but they were really practicing Torah. They were naming their kids Hebrew names. They were keeping the Shabbat. They weren't eating pork. The Christian church investigated that thing and persecuted them and then sent them off to Africa, sent them to the Canary Islands, sent them to the west coast of Africa, Sao Tome. This is Harvard. I'm just going through this history to let y'all know there's so much scholarship and DNA that goes into this. The Jews and Moors of Spain by E.H. Lindo. This is Harvard. I'm going to show y'all the Harvard stamp. Talks about how they burned the Negroes at the doorstep when they found out that they were secret Jews. So it's just so much, y'all. And the reason I go through this is to set the groundwork because a lot of the DNA that I'm going to show you links our people directly back to Morocco, directly back to Spain, and it's irrefutable. So when I say DNA can prove we're the people, it can. We just can't fully put our trust in it because now that we're finding out about it, you have to anticipate 
that Esau and these nations are gonna come in and start changing stuff. Y'all got to know how they get down. They're like, oh, Marv, I think they're finding out. Change the nomenclature. It says E1B1A, make it EZ 16052, Marv. Go ahead and change it. This is how they get down, y'all. This is how the nations get down. That's why the Most High says, trust not your enemy. We are in the land of our captivity. The word of Yah is too powerful. They will have to destroy every Bible on earth, which I ain't surprised they might try it. <laughs> they might have to, they would have to destroy every Bible to hide the history of who we are. So now family, I think I showed y'all enough books. I showed y'all, oh yeah, the Bible dictionary. It's like $5 on Amazon. Says that the sons of Ham are the dark races, not the Negroes. The Negroes, the Spanish, Moorish, Israelites that ruled the earth for like a thousand years, 711 to 1492, and that's about seven to 800 years. They know who we are. We are Israelites. We are Moors. This history is well documented. Moors just means the, the Israelites that rule. This is when you get into North African uh, Israelites, the Moroccans, um, the Wefran people, um, the Yayas lived in Morocco. But I'm finna show y'all now through the video. I'm gonna go through some of that history as well. I'm gonna show you that DNA a little bit more, and I'm gonna show you how our oral tradition the old tradition of the West African tribes we come from, they know that they came from Spain. They know that they came from Morocco. They know that we are the Sephardic Moors. And we're about to look at it, family. So now I'm about to switch to my screen share and I'm gonna go into 23andMe, Jed Match, all of this stuff, my true ancestry, to show y'all that DNA does prove that we are in fact the children of Israel. Let's look at it. What's up, Zion Dynasty? I'm back in this thing, y'all. So this is just a follow-up. This is going to be a part of that same video. But I'm going to go into some of my DNA, you guys, and I'm going to show y'all some beautiful stuff. I know I covered this a way whiles back because we've been dealing with a lot of other series since I really dealt with the Moors and the DNA and all that stuff. But we're going to look at this stuff a little bit more as a refresher. A lot of y'all may know this, but I know it's a lot of history. So it's hard to kind of digest all this stuff initially. That's why we're going to do a, a refresher, right? So first, I'm going to start with the Nary land or tradition of the Yoruba people themselves, right? Now, this oral tradition is verified by Cambridge, right? And I'm going to put that up for you guys while I'm talking about it. The Cambridge uh, or tradition of the Yoruba that's verified by Ulysses Santa Maria. So this exact oral tradition, I'm going to show you this in three different sources. This source that I found online, another source I found online, and I'm going to show you that Cambridge source um, by Ulysses Santa Maria. This is also verified by the Jewish Encyclopedia. I'm going to put that on the screen as well because I have to set the groundwork for the oral tradition of the people themselves. Who do the African tribes that we come from, who do they say that they are? And they say that they are Israelites. The Yoruba, the Igbo, there's so many of them, y'all. I'm going to deal with the Yoruba because if y'all do your My True Ancestry, a lot of y'all saying, I keep seeing Yoruba, I keep seeing Khoisan, because Yoruba and Igbo are the biggest groups that we were taken from. So I'm just using the Yoruba, and I have my certificate. I'm going to put that up, let y'all see mine. I did my African Ancestry that links me directly to these people through my father's father's father, father, all the way back to Africa, all right? So the Yorubas are said to be the sons of Ephraim. This is when y'all hear me see, but say Benai Ephraim, tribe of Joseph. A lot of y'all ask me, JB, how do you know that? This is for y'all. I'm going to show y'all this. Now, I did my African ancestry. I did my 23andMe. I did my Jed match. I did my doggone Africa. What did I say? Uh, Jed match, African ancestry, 23andMe, and my true ancestry. So I've done a lot of these different tests, you guys. And if you haven't done this stuff, it's not no big deal, y'all. The curses is our foundation, like I said. But this is to kind of show y'all why they're trying to hide this stuff and change this stuff, right? So the Yoruba sons of Ephraim, as stated in, in books regarding the Ebos, the father of the Yoruba people, Oduduwa traveled with Gad's son, Eri. Now Gad, now I understand, is one of the 12 tribes. So the Ebo traced themselves back to Eri, the eighth son of Gad, um, that they migrated him and Oduduwa, which is the, the patriarch of the Yoruba people, into modern day Nigeria. From North Africa, likely Egypt, and they settled in what is known today as Nigeria. Now let's scroll down, right? So, under Iberian Jews of Yoruba nationality, it says the Benai Ephraim, children of Ephraim. Ephraim is the youngest son of Joseph that received the birthright. So the name of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that birthright was given to Joseph, and Joseph passed it on to Ephraim. Ephraim would become the father of the northern kingdom. 
Ephraim is the leading royal family of the Northern Kingdom, which I put before you is Africa itself. And I'm going to show y'all that through the Afriot family. Right. So the Benai Ephraim, children of Ephraim from Nigeria, I'm telling y'all 90% of African Americans are going to find themselves linked to this people. Uh, these Ephraimites from Nigeria live among the Yoruba. Their old tradition or history tells that the Benai Ephraim came from Morocco. Another synonym for Moor is Morocco. A lot of my Moorish brothers that watch can tell you this. Morocco is key to who we are as a people. We are Moroccans. Our people migrated from that North African region. They were Moorish Israelites. This is where you get into Al Kahina, um, Abraham Ha'afrati, and a lot of that history. So they came from Morocco after the Jews were banished from Iber the Iberian Peninsula sometime after 1492. Uh, they speak a mixture language of Moroccan Arabic, um, Yoruba, and Aramaic, right? They are known with Aramaic is Babylonian, but a lot of the Israelites and the Hebrews and Christ spoke that language. They are known by the Yoruba people as Emo Yoquayim, or strange people, right? Unlike other African Israelite communities in Nigeria, so they're not the only one, I'm trying to tell y'all. The Benai Ephraim have the Torah, portions of which they keep in the sanctuaries, all praises. And now at the bottom it says, um, the Benai Ephraim provide living, irrefutable proof of this barely known history of mass Jewish resettlement in West Africa. So they're saying that nobody can deny the Benai Ephraim. That's why the Cambridge source talks about it, the Jewish Encyclopedia, about a hundred different online sources. I just showed y'all about two of them. And I have looked, y'all. I have searched. All right. This set of Moorish, y'all, now let's read this. This set of Moorish refugees are not to be confused with more ancient Hebrew and Canaanite tribes that had been living in Nigeria and other African countries for thousands of of years all praises be to the most high yah the mighty one of yaakobi the holy one of yasharal so that's one source i got another source that talks about the same yoruba son of ephraim there's so many sources y'all i'm not gonna finna go through all them things y'all uh because i gotta i gotta get y'all this information so now not just that now that's kind of verify some of this old tradition in other places now, this is the Jewish virtual library. I'm telling y'all, I come with credibility with this stuff because I don't take this stuff lightly. Now, Ifran or Afran, that's what we're going to be talking about. The provincial capital of Central Sud region, North Central Morocco, is situated in the middle Atlas Mountains. It is Morocco's winter and summer premier resort area. According to Judeo-African tradition, they know about the Judeo-African people. I've been telling y'all. Wolfram is regarded as the first site of Jewish settlement in Morocco. So they know about these Jews, these Israelites in Morocco. So when you just read about the um, Yoruba coming from those Iberian Jews in Morocco, the Jewish Virtual Library, the Jewish Encyclopedia, Cambridge, all of them verify this information. Um, many legends have been created about this ancient community of Ofran, uh, whose first members are said to have arrived from Eretz, Israel, um, before the destruction of the first temple. This is why I tell y'all, Africans are Israelite Judean people have been going into Africa since antiquity, right? And not just that, I think I showed y'all the, um, let me see if I can find it, the non plus website that had a book y'all i couldn't even find this book online i couldn't find it on amazon i tried to get it for myself just to be able to share it with you guys but in a let me close this out in the sefer nur hamarav in jerusalem 1910 this is in the jerusalem library it talks about this wafran uh, that have conserved up to the present another old tradition in support of the belief that their ancestors had came at a time of the deportation of the 10 tribes. Now, a side note, um, uh, Derek Lane, the anthropologist, talks about the Igbo and the Yoruba, these Israelites of the Northern Kingdom, coming to Africa when the 10 tribes were deported after the fall of the Assyrian captivity. Now, Derek Lane goes into a lot of history about that and the origin of the Yoruba and the lost tribes of Israel. Y'all can Google that, right? Derek Lane. If y'all have some questions, y'all pick that at the bottom, right? 
Um, after many generations, they founded a kingdom of their own and subdued all the native people of the region. This is why I tell y'all, the majority of Africa are Israelites. The Ebo and the Yoruba and all these different Israelites that came to the land of Ham, and I'm not talking about in a vicious way, because the Hamitic people loved our people. Joseph saved Egypt, right? Our people came in and had many babies, were proliferous, we were in ditch, we were just hardworking and, and, and uh, productive, right? And we just became so numerous that today the majority of that region are actually Israelites. Uh, their first monarch was called Abraham Ha'afrati of the tribe of Ephraim, from whom are descended all the succeeding kings who bore the name Afratim, right? So this is in Jerusalem 1910, talking about these Wafran people that we see in the Jewish virtual library had been in Morocco for I don't know how long. Um, a Jewish kingdom was set up there, which was governed by the Afriot family, the word Africa. And I have multiple sources, like the Africans that wrote the Bible, that source, that shout out to Tao Ministries for dropping that source. Um, I got that book when he talked about it, um, how the, the word Africa, Ka, is a Roman suffix of the people of Afra, right? Now we see in Morocco, which is the northern region of Africa, the Afriot family were called Efrati, and the Jews of this kingdom are said to have belonged to the tribe of Ephraim, one of the lost 10 tribes. So y'all, the nations know our people are not lost. They know where them lost tribes are. They're in Africa, right? I'm telling y'all. So now that's the Jewish Virtual Library. That's Jerusalem Library. I talked about Cambridge saying the same thing, the Jewish Virtual Library. Um, the Jewish Encyclopedia, the Cambridge Ulysses Santa Maria. So we didn't establish the oral tradition of these West Africans, these Yoruba, um, these Igbo as coming from Morocco, coming from Spain. Now, I'm gonna show y'all another source by the Davidic Dynasty.org where they say that the second family, Shafardic, these are the Spanish Israelites, is the Al Lahudi, the David family. This is Al Dahudi is David family in Arabic who are descended from the children of the last murdered Rashagola, or the Exilarch, right? Um, in Baghdad, whose children in the generation of Rabbi Yahudi, or Yahuda Halevi, fled to safety in Spain. So that ancient noble David family, right? Ephrati family, I'm gonna drop that nugget out there, fled into Spain way back during the time of the Exilarchs, on the Babylonian era. The Exilarchs, that was a term during the Babylonian era where our people were in captivity and the head of the Exilarchs was the Rosh Hagola. He was like the head leader of the nation while our people were in captivity. This started in Babylonian era, right? So a group of that people went to Spain even during the Babylonian era. Now Rabbi Abraham Ben Dahudi or Ben David, the chronicler of the 12th century, I have his work, mentions the fact in his work Sefer HaKabala. As it seems several other families later branched out from that David family, such as the Don Yayas. Now they don't have it on here, but Yaya changed his last name. Don Yaya changed his name to Negro. So the Don Yayas are the Yaya Negro people. That's where you get that so-called Negro from. Y'all, this stuff is powerful. Um, we are actually linked to the Yayas, that royal family, that royal David family linked to the Ephrates that lived in Morocco that had been in Spain, right? Uh, such as the Don Yayas, the Abarbanels, who also never cease to trace their origin to King David himself. Those related to the Al Dahudi we find after the expulsion, I told y'all, the Jews, the Moors got kicked out of Spain. And we find them after they got banished in Morocco. Let me read that again. Those related to the David family, we find after the expulsion in Morocco. So y'all, this is the Davidic dynasty. I showed y'all the Jewish virtual library. I talked about the Cambridge. I'm gonna put that Cambridge thing on there. The Jewish encyclopedia, um, these numerous online sources that say about these Moorish Ephraimite Israelites that were banished and ended up in Morocco. Now let's look at the DNA. Now I had to set this stuff up to show you how what to expect when you look at the DNA. Because if I don't explain to you the oral tradition, you're gonna see stuff like Al-Andalus. Like let's look at my true ancestor. This is mine. This is my logged in one. 
you see your Ruba plus Al Andalus. Like when I first seen it, y'all, I was like, what the world is Al Andalus? I never heard that in school or anywhere. When you click it, it says Al Andalus is known as Muslim Iberia. And as you can see, this is modern day Spain. Ancient Spain was known as Iberia. And when the Muslims, when the Moors conquered, they named it Al Andalus, our place of the light, right? So, and that's a lot of Moorish history. If y'all want me to go into more detail on our Moorish ancestry, it has it in your DNA. If y'all do your my true ancestry, you're going to run into the Moors, right? There was a lot of wisdom that the prophet, the honorable noble, Drew Ali and those, those ancestors of ours, a lot of wisdom they knew that, that I don't know how they knew it because my true ancestry, this is a new phenomena of science, right? So now I'm going to start with, with um, my true, uh, 23 of me, and I'm going to go through my findings, right? So now, as you see, I did my paternal haplogroup test, and I got to explain haplogroups for my family because there is a lot of confusion about this science. The science is not evil. It's the, the people that are using it, white folks, in, that's what I'm talking about. When white folks use it to confuse our people and it causes a lot of deception. Now, if you do a paternal haplogroup test, all you're testing is your father's 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 lineage. The Y chromosome is directly passed from father to son. It does not engage in meiosis because a father has a Y and an X chromosome. It does not mix. Now the X engages with the mixing process with the X of the mother. This is where that X comes to the son, which is the father's X mixed with the mother's X, but the Y comes directly to the son. Why do I explain this? Now I can do videos on this y'all. Uh, this is one of my areas of uh, my degree was in biomedical sciences and I'm just kind of explaining it to y'all so you can get an understanding that the paternal haplogroup does not mix a father passes his Y chromosome directly to his son right and it takes thousands of years for slight mutations to occur with the Y chromosome the X is a little bit different the maternal haplogroup is a little bit different because the father and the mother engage in meiosis where portions of the X chromosome of the father and portions of the mothers mix together to create genetic diversity so now this is my paternal haplogroup so this is why when israel say the most high one playing no games he knows that you are who your father is the father's dna does not change that y chromosome does not change it establishes lineage so mine as you guys can see is ez16052 um if you look at isojig and like i told y'all they changed this nomenclature like three times first it was e1b1a7a uh, then it was EL485, then it changed to this group, EZ16052. But y'all don't have to fear, because isogg.org can take that nomenclature and break it down for you. So, now what I'm looking at is E1B1A. Now watch this now. And you see a subgroup of E1B1A is E1B1A1AC, which is EL485. So family, the majority of Israelites, if y'all do your DNA, you're going to be E1B1A. Now, like I told y'all, the, the scriptures and the prophecy is our foundation because these white folks can change this stuff at any moment. But for the most part, the DNA is just used to unify our people. I got to repeat that. We use the DNA to say, OK, if African-Americans are all Israelite descendants from West African Israelites, then if we find out what DNA we are, any person that does their DNA and it matches is an Israelite because our foundation is the curses. Because the curses say that African Americans, we went through what we went through because we're Israel. So anybody that descends from the Africans that were taken in the transatlantic, you see where the science comes in? It's just a tool. You have to understand what the tool is meant to do, right? So the tool is meant to unify the diaspora. The tool is meant to say, okay, if all African Americans that fit the curses are Israelites, let's see what DNA they are. So then any person that is that DNA is an Israelite. And what y'all are going to find is that you're going to be linked to E1B1A. EL485 is like 60 to 70% of us. Um, and this is a subgroup of E1B1A. Now that EZ16052. Now all of these are branches that go under that EL485. If you scroll down, you will find EZ16052. Y'all know this is a lot. I did this for myself just for peace of mind. You don't have to do all this. 
the work that I'm doing, family, I pride myself in knowing that I'm doing it for my family. Because I know that all of y'all, if you do your DNA, for the most part, you're going to find this. You're going to have this same result. So there's no need to get freaked out about it. Now, if you want to do it to find out if you're Judah or Benjamin or Levi or Ephraim, then you can do it because I can also, and I got to reply to a lot of y'all, I'm behind on breaking down your individual DNAs to show y'all, but hopefully with these tools, y'all be able to find it. And I'm going to go back through and kind of reply to you guys and show you how to interpret your DNA. Now, like I said, the scriptures and the prophecy is our foundation. Y'all understand it. This is just for supplemental reasons and that kind of thing to unify our people. So we see that African-Americans, if they do their paternal haplogroup, group, are going to be linked to E1B1A, right? EL485. Now, let's go to Jed match. Now, Jed match, y'all see, this is where the JB come from. You know, Jess Lamb and Zion. It got my, you know, my kit information and all that stuff. Brandon Jess Lamb and Zion. And this is my Jed match. Now, Jed match can test your DNA against different populations that are alive today and show you if you are related to these people. Now, I have a couple of projects up. I have one that is Ethio Helix. And as you guys can see, a part of my, my chromosome, it takes all 20 of your chromosomes and it kind of compares it to different people. You see Morocco. Now, Algeria is also North Africa, um, Libya. Um, it's a lot of different North African countries, Mauritania. But as you see, this is connected with my West African Bantu population. So we know they expect the Bantu Negro E1B1A, but it also has North African influence. This is because over time, this is a less percentage because our people migrated from that region, but it still shows up. So you see that Morocco and a lot of Moroccan that goes back to the Yoruba or tradition. Now let's continue. Now, I also did a Dodecad. I think this is Dodecad. Ah, uh, yes, Dodecad. So I did this Dodecad test as well. And as you see, you see these Bantu Israelites on this side, the primary and the secondary, watch this, Moroccan Jews, Moroccan Jews, Moroccan Jews, North African Jews, North African Jews. And I've seen brothers that got Algerian Jews, uh, Libyan Jews. This is proving that this is still in our DNA, y'all. This stuff is crazy. How the Most High's fingerprint is all the way down into our genome. Now, y'all, the curses don't get caught up in the flesh because sometimes we can be like, oh, man, they start freaking out. The curses already say who we are. We are the children of Israel. The science is just a way to be like, man, look at how neat this stuff goes. Look at how deep the Most High put our DNA, put who we are inside of our genome, right? Now, I'm going to show you guys another one. Now, if you do your single population of MDLP, uh, this is MDLP World. The closest population that African Americans are linked to is the Limba Bantu people. The Limba, y'all check out my Limba video, are proved to be, without a shadow of a doubt, descended from the Aaronic dynasty of the priest. That's where you get Limba. Because in the Hebrew language, that V and that B sound are interchangeable. So Limba or Liba is the very name of that Bantu tribe, y'all. And this, some of y'all gonna have a closer distance than me. The lower the distance, the better. That means you're closer to that people. Y'all, y'all got a little European in me from just mixing in over time. You know, Jacob did some foolery. So the lower the distance, the more close you. I seen sisters that say I got ten. Some brothers say I got three. This shows how closely related you are to the Levite tribe, which are the Limba people of the Bantu people of African Israelites. All praises to the Most High Yah. So next, I'm gonna show y'all my true ancestry. Now this is back to my true ancestry. I seen a brother send me his Yoruba. Al Andalus was like three. Mine is 14.5. But a lot of y'all are gonna get way closer to this people than I am. That's why I do this work for y'all. I do this to show y'all the, the, the results that I'm getting. This is y'all's history. This is your identity. We are the descendants of the Israelites, y'all. So mine is Yoruba and Al Andalus. Al Andalus, as we saw, is Spain, right? So where do we see a Yoruba and a Spanish people? So the Yoruba Spanish people that are Moors, where did we see this? Let me show y'all. The Nari land Iberian Jews are the Benayafraim from Nigeria that live among the Yoruba. 
Their old tradition is that the Benai Ephraim come from Morocco. Wait, come from Morocco? That's where the Moor comes from? Moor, right? So they come from Morocco after the Jews were banished from the Iberian Peninsula. Iberian Peninsula? Al-Andalus? Muslim Iberia. Y'all, this stuff is powerful. Our ancestors, that's why we got to honor those that came before us. Their old tradition is money. These people knew who they were. That's why the Jewish Encyclopedia. That's why the Jewish Virtual Library. That's why Cambridge Ulysses Santa Maria. That's why Harvard Tudor Parfit. That's why Oxford Eden Bruder. That's why all of them already know this history. Let's go. They already know who we are. And our forefathers, our ancestors over there in Africa know that they are from Morocco when the Jews were banished from Iberian Spain or Al-Andalus and that they are who? The Benai Ephraim. Oh my goodness, Marv. They Who is Ephraim? The son of Joseph. The son of who? Jacob Israel. Let's go. So with that, y'all, I'm going to switch back over. So I showed y'all the Jewish virtual library that talks about the Moroccan Jews that a Friot family. I showed y'all the Jerusalem library that talks about that Ephraimite family as well. All right? I showed y'all the Davidic dynasty.org that talks about the David family that we found in Morocco. These Moroccan Sephardic Israelites went into present day Nigeria because the founding of the Nigerian people was Israel from the beginning with Gad, son Eri, or Gad's eighth son Eri, and Odudua. So now y'all, I'm about to switch back and we're going to close it up and I'm going to do a last couple of remarks. But I love y'all. I hope y'all learn from the science. All praises to the Most High Yahweh. <laughs> All oh, praises, honor, glory to the most. I told y'all, your boy ain't playing no games. I come with receipts. That's why I went through all that scholarship. That's why I showed you Dr. Tudor Parfit. That's why I showed you Edith Bruder. That's why I showed, let me get these books back out. That's why I showed you Harvard E.H. Lindo. That's why I showed y'all Joseph Christoph, Jews and Morris of Spain. That's why I showed y'all J.A. Rogers. That's why I showed y'all Light and Truth. That's why I showed y'all, oh my God, the Jewish Encyclopedia. They all know who we are. That Moorish Israelite history, the Moor is the key. Because when you know that we're linked to the ancient Moors, it opens up the DNA where when you see Morocco, when you see Algeria, when you see Libya, when you see Al-Andalus, when you see Yoruba, you know who you are. All of y'all that done done your my true ancestry that keep saying, JB, what is this, Yoruba Khoisan? You're an Israelite. The Khoisan are in South Africa. A lot of that remnant is from the South Africans that were there when the Limba migrated into that region and displaced them. So when you see Khoisan, these are the remnants of the Aboriginal um, South African people that were there when the Limba displaced them. So that's gonna show up in your DNA. That's why you're gonna see a lot of different elements of different populations where our people migrated from. So I gotta go back through this, y'all. I gotta show you now. So 23andMe. It's gonna show you that you're E1B1A. That means your father's, 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 father's lineage goes back to the transatlantic slave trade. That's all we're proving. Because we know the curses of that people that went through the transatlantic are Israel. So if we can prove genetically we're linked to that people, you're an Israelite. Now the curse is gonna let you know already, but this is where the logic comes from. So the curses say we're Israel, that we're linked to that people, E1B1A, is the haplogroup, now they trying to change it y'all, so you can't trust Esau, but for right now, E1B1A is that haplogroup that says, yo, JB, your father's father's father lineage goes back to the transatlantic, so I know I descend from the cursed people that went through the curses, right? Now, after that, you can look at ISOGG to find out if you're E1B1A, if they give you a weird nomenclature, right? Jedmatch is gonna compare your DNA, so you're gonna run into the Ethiopian Jews, you're gonna run into Morocco, Algeria, the Moroccan Jews, all that from Jedmatch, and you're gonna see that your closest population is the Limba. And we already know they descend from Aaron. We already know they're the priests. And that's where Khoisan comes from because that's the people that lived there before our people got there. So we got there mixed around with those people and that kind of thing. So, now we went through that. Then we saw my true ancestry. My true ancestry showed that you're gonna be linked to Yoruba, Al-Andalus, and more. Those three terms are important to verify the oral tradition of the Yoruba. Now, your DNA is gonna say Yoruba, Al-Andalus is Spain or Muslim Iberia. So you're gonna be linked to Iberia, Yoruba, and more. And I already showed y'all the websites that show that the Yoruba's oral tradition is that they're Ephraimites, that they're Israelites, that are from Morocco. These Moors are from Morocco 
and were banished from Iberia or Spain when the white folks kicked all the Moorish Israelites. They got rid of us because we ruled the earth for almost a thousand years. They said, y'all got to get out of here. So the Christians, this is where the Inquisition comes in. Y'all got to get deep. This is where all this stuff I done told y'all. The Jews and Moors of Spain and E.H. Lindo, where they were persecuting them black Israelites. They was killing them boys. If you didn't convert to Christianity, if you didn't do that madness, they was killing us. So the Christian church was teaming up to destroy Israel. This is that red dragon, the mark of the beast, all these other videos, this sets the stage. Y'all got to check those videos out. So the Christian church was oppressing us. They kicked us out of Spain and they kicked us and we went further from Morocco, deeper into Africa. This is where you get the E1B1A, Sub-Saharan Negro, which is a Spanish word, from the Yaya Negro family that was one of those Moorish families that came from that region and migrated. So y'all, when I tell you the DNA proves we're the people, but like I said, white folks are crafty. They changed my nomenclature like three times. So it can make you freak out and be like, oh my God, JP, I don't know what this is saying. And that's what the Most High don't want our people to get fearful because he knows the game they're playing. That's why he said, well, well my child, sit down and let's go back to the word. That's like a good loving dad, y'all. He loves us so much. He doesn't want to over, overburden us. He says, don't get overwhelmed. Go back to these curses, the yoke of iron, all of this that our people went through. You are my children. The DNA is if you want to further be able to help. There are some of our people that come from such a, a scholarly mind. And some of them, our people can be like, well, y'all y'all trust more in, in, in what you think you know than what you don't, right? So for some of those brothers, if we introduce this scholarship, if we show them the Harvard, the Oxford, the Cambridge, the Jewish Virtual Library, the Jewish Encyclopedia, y'all got receipts. Y'all done seen all these books I didn't showed you that it help them understand that there is evidence to what these black folks saying. I do all this for love of my people, right? I know a lot of y'all might be like, JB, you don't have to do all that for these boys. They just, they just coons and that kind of thing. But the most high is faithful, y'all. If he feels like, if he explains this in a way that you will believe the most high is doing it, y'all. And the most high is giving me all this research that I'm sharing with y'all to further emphasize that if you go through the curses, if you go, to go through Joel 3, if you go through Song of Solomon 1-5, I am black but beautiful. Job 30-30, my skin is black upon me. Judah's first wife was an African. Moses' wife was an African. Joseph's wife was an African. Christ fled into Egypt to hide. Paul was mistaken as an Egyptian. If you just go through the Bible, oh my God, I can hem you, him or anybody up and prove that we the people. Then I go through the curses. You're going to go through a nation as swift as the eagle flies. You're going to have a yoke of iron around your neck. You're going to go into slave cargo ships. You're going to be sold as bond women and bond men. That Bible is all I need. But just in case I got a brother or sister that says, well, what's, how did we become Africans? And you're saying we're Israel. And how did that happen? Migration. A series of migrations over time is how we got to this present circumstance. So with that, y'all, I'm not going to let, I might do a follow up, but I'm just letting you know to answer that. Science can prove we're Israel, but our foundation is the prophecies and the word of Yahweh, our father. So I hope y'all got something. If you have any questions about your DNA, if you go down that route and try to prove your tribe, let me know. I'm behind on a lot of brothers going through messaging and replying and sharing their DNA with them. But y'all, I love this thing and I love y'all. So peace, love, blessings, and black power to the chosen race of the most high. Y'all, I love y'all with the love of the Messiah. Be blessed if y'all have any questions, comments, concerns comment down below if y'all want to continue to cash up and support us i'm gonna put that up in the screen for y'all i love y'all and enjoy the rest of your day if you have any other concerns just let me know so peace love and blessings i love y'all with the love of the messiah shalom all praise to the most high yeah.